and we're going forward with research on a new Orient Express that could, by the end of the next decade, take off from Dallas Airport, accelerate up to 25 times the speed of sound, attaining low Earth orbit, or flying to Tokyo within two hours. It was called the National Aerospace Plan, and that was started by President Reagan and his administration, and it was an idea to have a single stage to orbit, scramjet-powered vehicle. Although the National Aerospace Plane never flew, the X-30 program generated voluminous research data. Out of the X-30 effort came two programs that continued the quest for air-breathing hypersonic flight. High Tech was an AFRL program that developed a functional ground-testable scramjet engine. A scramjet is a supersonic combustion ramjet, and it's used for flight generally above Mach 5. Well, if we could use a scramjet to fly through the atmosphere, you could have a propulsion system that would go fast, but take all the oxidizer it needs out of the atmosphere instead of storing it in the vehicle. Firing around 80 different times in the NASA Langley 8-foot wind tunnel, the high-tech test articles allowed AFRL to develop the rules and tools of scramjet engine flight. HyperX was a NASA program that sprang from the canceled X-30. This 12-foot-long X-plane, looking like a scaled-down X-30, was the first air vehicle to be propelled by a scramjet engine. While the X-43 was a very successful flight program, its engine used hydrogen fuel limiting the range of the plane and resulted in an engine that could not be transitioned into an operational vehicle. In 2003, AFRL transitioned the high-tech test data into a new vehicle test program called the Scramjet Engine Demonstrator, or SED. So uh, the then chief scientist of the Air Force, uh, Dr. Mark Lewis, came to me and he said, you know, SED just doesn't cut it. And I've got an idea. How about we designate it, give it an X vehicle, because that's what it really is going to be. And I suggest X-51. And the idea behind the X-51 designation was that he thought it was a good juxtaposition of the X-15 nomenclature of the hypersonic rocket-powered vehicle that was very successful in the late 1950s and the 1960s. It was the first practical scramjet engine that actually proved to the aerospace community that you could ignite and combust in supersonic air conventional fuels and power an aerospace vehicle of relevant size to perform a mission. While the X-51 is comparable in size to the X-43, it circulates conventional jet fuel through the walls of its engine to keep the motor cool. This made for an engine that ran cooler and by design, longer. In fact, the first flight of the X-51 lasted longer than all previous air-breathing hypersonic-powered flights combined. As well as using common jet fuel, the materials sourced for the X-51 were all readily available and common in aircraft construction. Other challenges the X-51 design team faced were aerodynamic heating, engine control, and flight control systems. Over a period of five years, AFRL researchers and partners developed and refined the X-51 engine and airframe design, preparing it for a series of flight tests that would prove the viability of the vehicle. These flight tests culminated with the fourth and final flight, when the X-51 flew over 230 nautical miles in just over six minutes over the Point Magoo Naval Air Warfare Center Sea Range. And it went off, and sure enough, it went from like Mach 0.8 to like Mach 5.0 in about, you know, 20 seconds. The whole mission's about two and a half minutes, much like the Kentucky Derby, right? You're just waiting to see it, and then all of a sudden you start seeing it going down, and you're like, uh, oh my gosh, it's starting to slow down. And then I heard the Boeing chief engineer kind of go very coolly. He goes, yeah, we're out of gas. We just ran it out of gas. And I went, oh, I guess it went well, right? Beginning with the X-1 and carrying through the X-51, AFRL is working to ensure that hypersonic travel will no longer be an impracticality and successfully transition the related technologies to revolutionary game-changing capability for the U.S. The future of hypersonic vehicle design owes much to the X-51's flights, which have forged the path toward practical hypersonic flight.